All right, welcome back to the channel. And if you've watched this channel and if you're subscribed, please do. Um, I've done optiplexes and I know a lot of people have done it before, but I actually came up with something today and found something today that's gonna help this a lot better. So we're gonna talk about it. Um, one of my more uh, common videos that I've done is the optiplex where I've done a complete facelift on it, took a 3010 and popped in a nice case and sell, sold that computer and that computer went on to a nice happy home. Um, also, I did an update on the video where I did a little more in depth sort of hack guide on how to I do the power button mod and how I make that working. So I've gotten a lot of comments, I've gotten a lot of feedbacks on how to do this and um, one person subscribed, uh, commented on my page, hey, I'm doing it all wrong, blah, 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 this, that, and the other, whatever. And he came out with a video on how to do it, and that's fine. And, you know, his video is good, and I've actually recommended his video a few times to other people. But the common issue is, is that a lot of people are not comfortable wire splicing and chopping like that, or just not comfortable with diagrams. And, hey, I understand, I'm not either. And searching the interweb, I found this. Check this out. Dell Optiplex motherboard header adapters. That's right, made for the Optiplex 390, 3010, and 3020 motherboards. So this is done by Harbin Repair. Huge shout out to them. This is not sponsored by them. I found this and I bought this on their eBay a page. And I'll put links to their page and I'll put links to their eBay page, uh, Harbin Repairs. And I wanted to check it out. So it's $25, which is fine, but sometimes paying the money for the convenience is worth it, especially if you're trying to do a mod like this, save a little money. And I bought it and I figured we'd check it out and see how it works. So uh, $25, I got this thing in a couple of days. So let's open this up. So we got a little adapters over here and we got the instructions. All right, and we'll actually look at the instructions. I'm gonna flip them and throw these things out, but we're actually gonna look at the instructions real quick because they're very helpful and there's some good information on it. So let's take out these connectors. As you can see, we got this one, which this is kind of hard to look at on the camera. This is for the hard drive LED. This is for the, um, I believe, the front panels. This is for the power button. I don't know if that comes in there. Power button, all right. And with the power button, you'll be able to use uh, the power switch a lot easier with no cutting, no splicing whatsoever. I'm gonna talk about that. The power switch, if you want the diagnostics LED for the Dells, you can plug in a LED for that and the power LED. Now for this one, for the front panel, and I forgot to mention this one, this one actually has uh, the hard drive LED, so you'll still get to get that activity from your hard drive. This one is for the, um, the USB, and if you're not plugging in a USB header, or you need to get that thing going, this is actually what goes into there. And um, we'll talk about something else real quick that I noticed with this, which he actually mentions on his uh, YouTube channel. So going through the contents, like I said, I got the power diagnostic LED, the diagnostic LED header, and the USB 2.0 header. Okay, um, what I like is that he has the diagrams that show you exactly how to put it in. Now, if you're running the 3020 or the 3010, 390, the diagnostics hard drive LED orientation changes up a little bit, and um, I'll put a link to his video, and you can watch that. He talks about that, and then it talks about the USB he uh, header orientation for all. So, very simple, very easy to use, no more cutting, no more splicing, no more, no more annoying errors. So, um, we're going to switch to the bench, get a better view of this, and then um, I'll show you exactly how this works. Normally what uh, some people do, and I've even done this in a couple of these builds, is that you keep these old connectors. This is the um, I.O. and, well, this is the diagnostic uh, front I.O. panel, whatever this one's called. Keep this, you plug it in right over here. That helps with one error. Then you take the, uh, the power button, which has this little proprietary small little pinout. We usually pop them in right over here. Then I usually splice some wires, do some abracadabra hocus pocus, and then you have these kind of dangling around. And then you take the USB um, front panel connector and all that stuff. Even with the, um, the audio connector, we plug them into the connector actually down over here. And we have no errors. But you have all this stuff like tucked away in the case and it's horrible and nobody likes that. You want a clean case, especially if you're gonna put this in an open case and uh, have a little you know, nice look to it. So we're gonna come back to over here and we're gonna start first with the front panel IO. So this is very simple. Um, take a look at the uh, instructions, and if we pull the instructions right up over here, as you can see, the Diagnostics HD LED actually shows you the orientation they have to put in now. It's important that you follow these instructions uh, because if you put these the wrong way, you can short them out. So make sure you follow it. So this one's actually gonna go facing up this way. Let's see if hopefully the camera light is not too bad. It's gonna go facing up this way. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this in right over here. Make sure you have it nice and secure, all right? And then where it says power LED, um, 
and power switch, we're going to go ahead and plug in our power LED. All right, just like so, have it backwards. And then we're going to take our two power LEDs, make sure we have our negative and positive correct, put this in the bottom. If you don't have the diagnostic LED, you don't need to plug it in. Um, that's something you can add on your own case if you want to do that. Uh, another thing you can do is just plug the hard drive in there if you're real big on having that diagnostic LED. Okay, so we got that plugged in. Uh, power switch over there, power LED over there. So that's the first part you need to do. Uh, next thing you need to take is just take the, uh, what do they call it? The diagnostic LED one. Uh, if you have the 3020, it's actually going to go plugged in this way. And if you, this way, this orientation with the pin, uh, hard, hard drive pin up, if it's the 3010, it's going to go plug down this way. So we'll just go ahead, pop that one in right over here in the bottom. Now, if we had a hard drive indicator, we'd actually go ahead and plug it in to right over here. But I don't, not for the test bench, don't really care about it for the test bench. So um, next one is the USB 2.0. Check the orientation. It doesn't matter for the 3020 or the 3010. It doesn't. And you just go ahead and you pop this in right over here in the bottom. Simple. Now, um, I watched their YouTube video and they made a actually great suggestion. So um, don't know what type of case you're going to put this in. If you're going to put this into a normal case, you have to connect the HD audio. Um, if you have a case that doesn't have the HD audio, all you need to do is take um, a jumper and on the top upper left two pins, just go ahead and just put a jumper over there. And by doing that, that will actually get rid of that front um, IO panel error, whatever it's called over there. So that'll take care of that. So now that we have that done, what we're going to do is uh, we're actually going to plug some power into it, move it over here, and we'll see it. And that way you'll see that with this, with no splicing, no nothing, no crazy hacks, you get rid of all these errors and you can actually put this in a case and use this motherboard. So um, let's switch over there real quick. All right. So now we got it plugged up, got power to it. Just want to zoom in right over there so you can see how the um, hard drive button connector works over there. Okay. That is the one for the hard drive LED. You'll plug it in right over there. The USB 2.0. So you can get rid of that error right over there. And like I said, this is what we're talking about with the HD audio. If you have an HD audio panel, go ahead and plug it into here. If not, just put a jumper for the top two left pins right over there. Let's see if I get that better. Yeah, right over there. And that will get rid of the error. So uh, let's go ahead. Let's give this power. Our fans are ramping up and let's take a look at our screen. Here we go. Here we go. And boom. All right. So these are the areas that we got. Previous fan failure because this thing booted up by itself before recording this. Rear fan failure, which all you need to do is just take um, a regular three pin fan. Just go ahead, plug it into this one and this one. You have your fan connectors. That'll get rid of that error. Hard drive not found because I don't have a hard drive in. So as you can see, no cutting, no splicing, no magic trickery. We were actually able just to put our factory pin connectors in there, use our factory headers and everything and get this thing working. So now when we go ahead and we actually pop this into a case, which we're actually going to do, um, I'm going to do one final build of a Dell Optiplex. Just put it in a case, just do one complete build. So stay tuned for that video. Um, you'll actually see that there's no special wiring. There's no special anything that was needed to be done and we didn't have to cut or splice or anything. So this is a great product. I was not sponsored by this. I bought this by my own money, but I had to do a video because I get a lot of questions about the power button, the front IO things to do. Um, some people have had to tuck things away. I've seen a couple of videos where people just, like I said, they cut, they splice, they do some crazy stuff and it works, but if you're not comfortable with doing that type of stuff, this is the easiest way to do it, to get this budget build Dell Optiplex going. These are third gens, we could pop an i7 in them, SATA, RX 570, put 16 gigs of RAM, still got a good 1080p gaming graphics cards. Also on his website, he does give you a link to the schematics of how he made these. So if you wanna make them yourself and even save yourself more money if you're that crafty and talented. So, so comment down below and uh, let me know what you think. If this is a good product, something you would buy, um, your experiences with it, like I said, I think this is the easiest way to do it that I have found without no cutting, splicing, no hackery, and you know, nothing is more agitated than when you have those cables just kind of spliced around, just rat's nest of garbage. And this would be a cleaner look for when I put this in a window uh, case. So hit the like button if you like the video, subscribe if you're not, so you can stay tuned, because I'm actually gonna do a complete build of uh, putting this into a case 
an open case so you can see how it looks. And thanks for watching, and we'll see what we'll come up with next.